In my last video, my last tutorial, I walked you through what Quantcast is and how you can benefit from from using Quantcast, um, particularly to better target your uh, target potential customers, um, thereby receiving more affordable advertising, more targeted. You're getting the right people to your website. So I showed you Bleacher Report and some basic. Uh, demographics from Bleacher Report, some things that you can capture from Quantcast, the real power of Quantcast. In this one I'm going to show you how you can opt out so that your data is not public like Bleacher Reports is, and then also um, the level of granularity that you can get into through using Quantcast on your own website. So first of all, after you get Quantcast, uh, Quantcast tag, it's a little bit more hands-on, so I'll show you in another tutorial how you can get your site set up on Quantcast. Um, first of all, though, <coughs> we have got I've got a, a client's website here pulled up. Um, I've hidden their personal data, so you can't tell what, which website they are. But they um, so when you first log in, it takes you to this page, your dashboard. You've got all the websites in your account listed here. And then if you click here, it takes you to settings. So when you go over to settings, it's got information here, some specific details that you can use to opt in, opt out. Um, there's the public access section. This particular client actually doesn't, they wanted their stuff to be publicly shared. They're not, they don't need to hide anything. And so they left it all visible. Uh, most of my clients though want this turned off. So I come through here, uncheck every box and hit save all settings. So it's ultimately going to make everything about their website invisible except for that they do have data on Quantcast. So if you go to quantcast.com and search their, um, like up, up here if you were to search in, search my client's name, it would show that they have Quantcast on their website. Um, you just wouldn't be able to see in any of the data. and. The reason why Quantcast feels okay sharing that the that, yes that site is in Quantcast network is simply because it's public facing information anyways. Any uh, self-respecting developer, web developer, could put together a script in 30 minutes that scrapes different websites and looks for Quantcast code and returns the URLs and then they could create a big database of companies using Quantcast and those databases exist. So. If you really want to know whether a site is using Quantcast, you can just look at their code, the code on their website, and say, yes, they're using Quantcast. So Quantcast doesn't need to hide that. But this public access data, the actual demographic profiling information, Quantcast does allow you to hide. You just uncheck all of these and hit Save Settings. And then your website is hidden. So that's how you use Quantcast without opening up your website to scrutiny of competitors, ultimately. I mean, most of my clients are just worried about competitors jumping in. Competitors aren't smart enough to put Quantcast on their site, but they might be smart enough to go in and spy on them and say, okay, these are the, the different affinities of competitor B, so let's target those. So, good way to make that height hidden. Now, um, in the rest of this tutorial, I will sh show you uh, an example of another client. They've set up different um, They've set up different segments within their Quantcast tracking. So this example competitor <coughs> is tracking people when they come to the home page and then looking at people when they're mid funnel, lead confirmation, purchase confirmation. So mid funnel would be let's say they put something into the shopping cart, but they don't check out. Because they put something into the shopping cart, my customer wants to know um their demographic profile because obviously they're interested in buying but maybe just not quite enough to make the purchase and then purchase confirmation creates a demographic profile for individuals completing the whole purchase process so this is your actual customer people that are coming to your website and purchasing this is who you want to be targeting most tightly with your advertising because you know this demographic segment is purchasing at a higher rate than other demographic segments, you want to pay more for these advertisers. So you increase your cost per click or your cost per mill. Um, 
you build extra campaigns targeting just these individuals. You do everything that you can to get these individuals to your website. Lead confirmation, these are individuals who completed a, a request more info type form on my client's website. So people requesting more info may be different than those that purchase. And so they want to demogra they want to demographically fingerprint them differently. Um, you know, this particular client has both a retail business, so that would be online transaction coming through the purchase confirmation pixel. And then they also have an enterprise segment that doesn't complete purchases online. So these would be individuals uh, submitting lead data and saying, hey, please contact me for more info. And so these are two very distinct and different segments on the behalf of this client. And then homepage is just tracking anyone that comes to their website. Um, they've labeled, labeled a homepage, but it's really, it's wider than that. It's anyone that comes into their website and they want to see that because they might see that they're getting demographic A that's coming to the website, but not demographic A never purchases or never completes a lead confirmation form. So they may want to exclude demographic A from their advertising, save more money, or target them with specific campaigns. Maybe demographic A is really early in the buying cycle, and so they want, they're just in the, the information finding stage. They come to your website hoping to find information, but you don't, you don't have data on your site to support demographic A. All of your information on your website is later stage funnel, and so people are coming to your website and not, comp not completing purchases because they can go find that, that early funnel information, just information about your product or about your service from a competitor. They can find that early information there, and they also complete the purchase with the competitor. So you may determine that demographic A is something you still want to capture, and so you build specific campaigns to capture them, and hopefully they start to show up in, in your purchase confirmation. So uh, uh, Quantcast is awesome. The segmentation is great. Let's you really drill down and get valuable, actionable data that you can use in your advertising campaigns. Um, for this example company here, I'm showing you that you can get, so we looked at Bleacher Report. It was a little bit more higher level. Um, for example, the affinities, it only showed you one page. You couldn't click through and see negative affinities. When you are in your own account, it gives you more data. It gives you all the actual numbers. Um, you can get really nitty gritty. So right here for my example company, my client, we're looking at just the purchase confirmation segment. And just for July of this year. So you can see over these this 30 day period, they had about 3,000 um, impressions on their order thank you page. Of that, you know, you've got, so you've got impressions, then you've got uniques, percentage of total index. Um, we covered percentage of total index in my last tutorial where I was introducing Bleacher Reports, Quantcast implementation. So here I'm just going to look at impressions in online cookies or unique cookies. So unique cookies, these are individual, unique individuals that came to the site. So you had about 1,900 males and about 350 females. So you had about 2,200 unique individuals come to your confirmation page. So that should match to your orders. Online orders orders should be around 2,200. Um, that is assuming Quantcast has 100% coverage, which they don't. And so in some cases, if Quantcast doesn't know whether an individual is male or female, they'll drop into an unknown bucket. They're not showing here on, on gender because there's not really an unknown gender. So this is going to be a smaller number, generally speaking, than your actual purchase number. Um, and then, so we've got about 2,200 unique individuals that have come to your site about 3,000 times. So you have an extra 800 um, visits that are unaccounted for, or are, are accounted for, um, but don't match back to unique visitors one-to-one -one ratio because visitors can visit the thank you page more than one time. That's what we're seeing here. Um, same thing with uh, cookies, impressions on age. Cookies will always be less than impressions. That's how that works. Um, gender, age, household educational attainment, all broken out here. Ethnicity, household and income. So my, this one client in specific, um, 
because they've got 85% of their traffic coming from males, they only target males. They don't even target females. Um, it's it's proven so successful for their advertising to target just males um, of these specific age ranges and then of this household income or this household educational attainment and this income um, they my client never did display advertising on Google it wasn't effective after they got this Quantcast data they started and um, they started again, you know, they, we had done display advertising with them previously, it didn't work out, so we drew it back. Once we got this data, we started again, because Google AdWords allows you to target display advertisements now, just to, speci to specific demographics. And so, they've been doing this, they've had wild success, they're going to continue to do so. Um, let me show you affinities here. So, I clicked on Cytographics. And this is showing you um, affinities. So my client here, uh, people that come to their website are also 3.6 times more likely than the internet average to visit science and nature related websites. Similar affinities for politics and commentary, technology, auto news and info. Um, and you can, so you can just see different affinities here. People are interested in computer hardware, business news and info. Um, and then we come down, you come to the bottom of the list, it starts to show negative affinities. So my client segment is less likely to travel or to, to read travel related news online than the average internet browser. Going down even further, you can see that people are really not interested in communities and teens or horoscopes or online games or kids, teens, toys, babies. So if my client was previously advertising in these different site to, on sites similar to these, they would draw back their advertisements. It's kind of what Quantcast is telling them to do here. And then you've got the same thing for websites. So it's got websites with different affinities. Um, you can see that people are who visit the Global Post, After Dawn, Runner's World, Newsmax, Pitchfork, Catholic, AV Club are. 3.6 times more likely to also, um, or people that visit my client's website are 3.6 times more likely to have also visited these websites. And so maybe they want to advertise on these websites. So this is the kind of information that you can get from Quantcast. It's very valuable. Anyone who's doing online advertising, online paid advertising, should be using Quantcast. Or individual companies doing SEO or offsite SEO partnerships should definitely be using Quantcast. It's free, um, and if you've got good data, a good volume of visitors coming to your site, it can give you a really accurate demographic profile of visitors coming to your site.